When I was born, the whole world thought I was a boy, and so did I, for about 17 years. If you clasp your hands together like this, and then take a moment to clasp them the other way, like that feels really wrong. But you might be looking around at everyone else, seeing their hands clasped together and thinking like, oh, that looks, you know, everyone's doing exactly the same as I am. This must be how it is for everyone. And then one day you might clasp them the way you naturally would, and it feels so much more comfortable. It feels so much more like normal. My name's Jen, my pronouns are she and her. I identify as a trans woman. Didn't come out until my second year of university, um, but there are so many moments looking back where I could have identified it earlier if I had had the language or um, had the understanding. I tried really hard to make the best of what I had. I did a lot of weightlifting, I played a lot of sport. I just could not get happy with my body no matter what I did. As a female, I had a relatively large chest, like I had really big boobs. It just felt really wrong, like it never felt like it was me. I came out quite late. Um, I was about 27. I wanted to come out a lot earlier, but I got really sick with cancer at 23. I'm an only child, so I didn't want to put mum through both. And also, I didn't really actually want to put my body through both either. As soon as the testosterone started hitting, and as soon as I started to feel that I looked more male, things just started to make sense. Like, I stopped feeling like I was fighting with my body every day, and I stopped feeling like everything was so hard. Because I didn't feel like I was fighting so much, it meant that I had a lot more energy and a lot more emotional capacity to go on and actually live more of my own life, but also support other people. That moment where who you are is really in sync with how you're feeling and how you're looking and the words people are using for you and how people perceive you and describe you and everything just like clicks, that's gender euphoria. It's your story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I am so much more in a state of gender euphoria now than I had been, you know, I've had the help of hormones um, to help that process along, but it has also been a lot of kind of work on myself and my self-image and how I feel about my body. So much of that comes from the people around us as well, you know, it's not just something that is about us and what we're doing. And, it's about um, our community. Yeah, it's about our community, it's about our family and our friends and the people around us and, you know, uh, we can have done absolutely nothing to our bodies in terms of transition and still experience that euphoria when people use the right pronouns or the right name or get it right and understand and see us. Mum wasn't surprised but I don't think she already knew. It's not something that was ever talked about so it's not something that so if you don't know about it I don't think it's something that's front of mind to go is this what my my child is going through. But she's become a supporter. Oh absolutely like she um, when I was running Kindred, which was the organisation for mentoring trans youth and their families and stuff, she would come in and talk to the parents and she'd do talks to the kids and stuff. Like, she's, she's very much become a supporter. We're dealing with a pretty full-on moment in time, I guess is how I'd put it. On a whole, people are really, really supportive, really wanting to learn more and know how to do better. Um, what we're seeing at the moment is a really vocal minority particularly in online spaces that is starting to really um, amp up their hate speech and their rhetoric. There's a lot of online abuse. There's been a lot of recent death threats to anyone who is um, openly contactable and openly trans. Some of us got the light end of the stick. Other people got direct death threats and extermination season. And yeah, there were some pretty horrific things. That feels definitely like it's increasing, um, so much so that Anyone who's been sort of open within that space has been recommended to put cameras in their houses and stuff. There's a lot of overlap between what's happening in online spaces around anti-trans rhetoric and what we saw um, particularly in the immediate aftermath of lockdowns with the anti-vaccine and anti-mandate crowd. Um, same people, same discussions. Is that you right? know? Yeah. There is a connection. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So we can see that from the um, from the groups that these people are organising in and talking in. There are organisations like the Disinformation Project who keep a close eye on this. We can see that it's coming directly from the states because they're parroting a lot of what's being said over there, particularly around gender diversity and drag queens and the threat that they might pose to children and this concept that we're groomers. A lot of what they're saying about trans people now are exactly the same messages that came about about gay people, you know, 30, 40 years ago. But it really does feel like we are a scapegoat. There's this idea that some people might use 
say, a trans person's access to a bathroom to pretend to be trans and use that to assault someone. But we know from organisations like Women's Refuge and Rape Crisis and things like that that it just doesn't happen. Sheer changing areas are still really intimidating for me, like going into, say, a swimming area changing room or a big gym changing room is still really intimidating even for me. Genuinely, we just want to go in, do what we need to do and get out. We know from the stats that trans people are much more likely to be the victims of violence than the perpetrators, right? That's something that's really significant. I think vulnerable is a good way to describe it. It's a community that's pretty overrepresented, sadly, in stats around self-harm and suicide, substance abuse, homelessness, things like that. Um, but we know that that isn't inherent to the community, right? It's something that comes as a result of having to exist in a world that really doesn't see you for who you are and um, doesn't listen when you, when you share about who you are as well. I'm tired. I'm tired and I'm scared. And if I've been doing this 12 years as someone who's exceptionally strong in who they are and I'm tired and scared, I can only imagine what it's like for those who are just starting out we genuinely just want to live our lives.